Good morning from Kalimpong. Last night I fell a little sick and I was because of my allergy flare up and I was sneezing the entire night so I did not get a very good night of sleep and I was supposed to wake up at 7, 6.30 or 7 and I woke up way later at 8.45 and that's when the uh, homestay called me up for breakfast and uh, I said no because like I wanted to explore the hard bazaar and I'm really excited to try Pambi. So because of that, I today is going to be another full day of explorations. But today we're going to take it slow because we have covered most of the touristy places and all. I still wanted to go to Crookedy House, which I couldn't go to yesterday. And uh, let's see if we can head there today and see how it looks like. I don't know how much I'll be able to film inside, but. Let's see. This is where the hard bazaar starts from. What is this? East? So, how do you use it? Oh, alcohol. Okay. Okay, thank you. Very interesting. This is the famous farm bay. ये फार्म भी है। हाँ फार्म भी है। अम्म इसको कैसे ट्राई करते हैं? हाँ ऐसे ही करता है। ये वाला जाल वाला है, ये वाला प्लेन है। किसी के आलू के साथ भी खा सकते हैं, किसी मुझे मामा होता है ना मीमी उसके साथ भी खा सकता है। अपना अपना पसंद चीज का। तो आप ऐसे बना के देते हो या? बना के देती हूँ। And you have like a lot of donuts and stuff as well. First time. ठीक है ठीक है तो ऐसा वाला मीनी भी डालो ठीक है अच्छा है तो थोड़ा कम स्पाइसी स्पाइसी तो थोड़ा कम ही दूंगी ओके ठीक है ये बूंद डाल क्या होता है अच्छा होता बॉईल ना पनाह दूंगी पर ट्राई करने लगी पर कमी दूंगी है हाँ आलू डाल दूंगी ठीक है मालूम कमी बाबू उनसे उन्हें फर्स्ट खा करेगी आज आलू आलू कौन है ठीक है ठीक है Thank you. So I'm just trying the farmy for the first time. It has this spicy gelatinous taste, like you get it in laughing. So it's a little like that, but uh, since they have chunks, so yum. Like it's a little spicy, and uh, the aloo dum, I think it makes it better. And I'm also sweating buckets right now. I got a fresh pack as well that I want to try it out when I go home. Tried farmy for the first time. It was so yum. If you like laughing. I think you should definitely try it. And now I'm gonna go on a hunt for some different kind of mushrooms. I started to smell like dried fish or something, I think, and I ran away. So, yeah. Like more food, I think she's making puri aloo dam. These soaps, I think these are soaps. This smells so potent. Finished checking out the hard bazaar. Now I'm heading to 
cafe calling wrong. I did see some mushroom sellers, but they had like fresh oyster mushrooms, and I actually wanted like dried shiitake or black fungus. So I'm gonna keep an eye out and see if I find them. But the hard bazaar is like extensive. You get all sorts of things there. In fact, I even ended up meeting the manager of the homestay I'm staying at. Now I'm heading to Cafe Kalimpong and uh, probably have some breakfast there or coffee. It's like about a 1.2 kilometer or 3 kilometers walk from here. And let's see how long I'll survive on these steep roads. It was fine. The roads were downhill. Now that's been a steep uphill climb google maps been taking me in circles and what happens in these hill stations is they have a lot of like roads connect each other through a lot of staircases and i'm supposed to take the stairs from here damn it looks like a crazy walk set myself up for a huge challenge i've come so far and still there's much more to go. I was definitely not ready for this. View from here though. Let's look at that view. to take a nice latte but I also want to kind of avoid lactose it's kind of flaring up my intolerance um, I also really wanted to have the thing momo and aridam but again gluten is also flaring it up so I'm a little confused as to what I should try at the end I had to hitch a ride because I just couldn't anymore and I'm glad I did because it showed 600 meters or something but it was quite a long way so I'm glad I hitched a ride in the end and um, the view from here is so beautiful like it's worth all the pain that I endured look, look at my face I have like burnt myself I feel I also should not have worn this this is like for like winters and I bought this because like sometimes it's windy and I didn't want to fall sick again today so I didn't want to take any risk but this was like really adding as a it was really working as an insulator a lot of the items were not available here today so I think I came on a wrong day I ordered an ice latte and some french fries I really wanted to have aloo dam and thing more say roti but I also didn't want to flare up my gluten intolerance so I'm taking it easy today but I've heard like really good reviews about this place the food is apparently really good and it's not anything you can just come here for the breathtaking views I see with a view and I think there's a school or something nearby because I can hear a lot of kids I'm a disaster like so clumsy such lovely landscape pictures here even like look at the step cultivation I think some local lecture live and celebrations thankfully now it's a downhill climb only and in another 300 meters, I should reach the Bhutanese restaurant. There we have the place. They also have a um, place Bhutanese style um, dining halls. I got this one peach iced tea and looks like it's from Thailand. I don't see anything written in English but it looks like Thai. So 
so I ordered like um, one stewed pork, one red rice, and one kewa dachi, which is potatoes and cheese. And I'm hoping the food won't be too much because I don't want to waste it. So this is the achum red rice. This is kewa dachi, which is basically a cheese and potato stew. Eze, which is the chili paste that I don't have the guts to eat. And this is the pakshafa, which is like dried pork with radishes. Super excited to have this. Such lovely fatty pieces of pork. This is so warming. It would have been lovely on a really cold day. Plus, it's really good because I'm nursing a cold, so that's. Let me try the fuck shabba. This is quite spicy. This is so good. I think even if I can't finish, I'm gonna pack it all up. So I can ask the homestay I'm staying at. I can ask them to warm it up for me for dinner maybe. Finished everything on my plate and I'm gonna pack all of the rest. Done with the food and now we're gonna go to Crickety House. John is almost here, I think he's turning the car and coming back. Trying my luck at the Crookety House again. It says the visiting hours Wednesday and Sunday 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. But let's see. Rang the bell but nobody, I can't see anyone. In case we can't take a look around today as well, I don't know like I can just tell you guys about this place. I, I think someone did spot me, probably the gardener or someone. He's going to ask. Helena Rorick hmm. uh, came in 1949 from Nagar in Himachal Pradesh and she came and lived in this house. The house belonged to Ajitashi, who, who is who is, is still alive, a princess, a Bhutanese princess. When Helena came, she was here, so she leased the house she stayed here from 1949 to 55 when she died and her ashes um, are kept you know did you go up into the stupa there's a gumba right um, on top of the hill in the army camp uh Durpin monastery yes yes, yes i've been on the when you reach the more on your right hand side there's a small garden i think it's locked because i called the mali here to help um, so that is where her samadhi her ashes are kept right and because her samadhi is there a lot of people who are her followers hmm. followers of agni yoga and nicholas warwick hmm. they make a point to come here and and visit a samadhi and because the samadhi is so near we have this international meditation mm. center so the house as you can see was yeah. built by dr grams do you know dr yeah, grams, dr. grams. A famous school yeah dr grams son-in-law norman uh, Ording, okay. built this house actually mm. he was an architect not only this you know morgan house that she thing this surya southern the army camp the red yeah. roof actually the roof was just like ours okay but being the army men they removed it all and they put this brand new sheet you know like uh, it doesn't look nice actually right. it was the same as our original sheet like yeah this, you know the slate so, huh. so it's like that so he was the architect and he's he's the one who built this house okay and dr graham also lived in this house with his daughter and son-in-law and he died in this house dr. oh Graham's. yes Come okay we, we had planted this rudrakshri tree uh. some time back and it's bearing fruits rudrakshri you know uh, so okay. no matter how we do it's either falling down or the schools are coming and eating everything you know okay. you can see a little bit of the brush here yeah? right so we're trying to save it okay it started bearing fruit you have to take off your shoes sure, sure. and uh, you won't be allowed to take videos inside. okay Pink lilies growing. 
I think these are wild lilies. such a nice tour by this lovely lady called Purva and I'm gonna talk to you guys more about the history and culture of the place of course like filming inside the museum was not allowed but if you're in Kalimpong you must must visit here this is the golf round you have like nice seating spots there the places some of them are playing golf as well If you're interested in golf, it would be a nice place to come check out. Like the lush, sprawling acres of land. So windy here as well. The weather like is really chilly and nice because um, this one is closer to Durpin Monastery, which is on the Durpin Hills. It's located on a little higher elevation, and they have like army school and KV school also here. I also like the people here are so nice. So I have left my bag in the car and it has my laptop my money everything but i i'm like pretty secure about it i know that he's not gonna take it like the people here are nice you can trust them had it been like obviously there are good and bad people everywhere and uh, but majority of the people here are actually really nice so you get like south indian food here If you didn't know this, Kalingpong is famous for its cheese and I simply had to bring back some for myself. Lark's, a provision store in the heart of Kalingpong is the right place to buy some cheese made in diesel. These are Gouda varieties or like? It's cheddar. Oh, it's cheddar. Okay. What is the, how do you uh, sell it? It is 900 rupees a kilo. Okay. Uh, depend on the weight. This is near about six. 600 grams it stays in the fridge for long yeah, yeah. or it goes bad you have to keep clean on it. okay it may get from this but you can take out Achha, i can take out the layer in. in the 1950s swiss missionary father andre butty started the swiss welfare dairy to provide a source of income to the residents of kalingpong cheese and lollipops were the signature items of this dairy over time, the milky lollipops made with hardened milk became quite popular in the surrounding areas. And so did its crumbly Emmental-like cheese. The quality of the Swiss cheese was such that it put Kalingpong forever on the global cheese map. After Father Bertie's demise, the dairy shut its operations. However, the ex-employees and few other cheese enthusiasts started their own cheese factories in neighboring villages. But the residents often lament that the quality of the original remains undefeated. Today, some Gouda and Cheddar cheese varieties are produced in villages close to Kalingpong, and some of them are imported from Nepal. I reached out to Samuel Yonzon, who, along with Krishnara and Sharma, are pioneer cheese makers in the area. But unfortunately, I didn't hear back from him. These are the chocolates. Okay. Okay. I was surprised to see how many bakeries had sprung to action in this tiny little hill station. And this only meant one thing. I had to try out some baked goodies for myself. I stopped at the shepherd's stall on the way to my homestay and packed a number of breads for home. I also spotted some lamingtons and I was pleasantly surprised at how good they were. Coated with chocolate and coconut with a soft crumbly sponge cake in between, there's no way you can stop at just one lamington. Wala bread, teen ye wala bread, or ye do, ye do. Ending the day with some chai here. Let me show you guys the view. Wow. So it's pretty late at night and I just thought I'll 
talk to you guys a little about the crookety house so today after coming back i did a deep dive on helena rorex life and the agni yoga society and the himalayan institute of goodwill and living ethic honestly it has been so much information so i don't know how to like sum it all up and give you guys a gist but it's also so interesting but that i need to come here and share with you guys everything that i have learned uh, since the lady there who was giving me the tour, Purva, I really want to give her a shout out because she was so lovely and kind and she explained it all in such a gentle manner. I was trying not to point the camera too much at her because she was a little shy and I didn't want to make her conscious, but she gave me a lovely tour and she explained everything to me in detail. So, and also she mentioned that not a lot of Indian people walk in to see the place, which is really sad. And only I think the ones who do come by are fans of Enid Blyton. So the house was actually, um, the architect of the house was Norman Audling, who was the son-in-law of Dr. Grahams, who also has a school, Dr. Graham School. And um, that house was passed on to Helena Rorek because she had a very keen fondness towards Kalingpong and uh, she and her husband basically founded the Agni Yoga Society and uh, she was married to Nicholas Rorik who was from Russia. They left Russia after the Russian Revolution, went to Finland and then when the civil war started in Finland they went to New uh, London and both of them were polymaths like avid polymaths, theosophists, Arche uh, Nicholas Rorik was an archaeologist, they were painters, philosophers, so you can understand like they were really intellectual and they um, and also they came from very well-to-do background as well and um, their paintings are very well known in fact Nicholas Rurek is known for his paintings of the Himalaya he painted the Shangri-La so yeah then they went to London they founded the Agni Yoga Society I think they were invited uh, in Chicago and then they went on to form a large network even in New York and after that they traveled through Asia um, they lived for a long period of time in Tibet and finally they moved to Himachal Pradesh in Nagar and where, where in fact you have a museum dedicated to Nicholas Rorick and his paintings and uh, and after that, eventually, I think after his death, Helena moved to Kalimpong and also um, so the couple had a strong inclination towards Eastern philosophies and um, that which is why they started the Agni Yoga Foundation. And a lot of it is related to old uh, Vedanta and Buddhism. In fact, the logo of the Himalayan Institute of Goodwill and Living Ethics. It, it says Maitreya Sangh. Pardon me if I'm wrong, but it has something to do with Shambhala, which is supposed to be the birthplace of Kalki, who is the last incarnation of Lord Vishnu and who is also supposed to usher in a new age called Satya Yoga. And Shambhala is ruled by Maitreya. I'm not very well aware of Buddhism, so I really don't want to make any mistakes. So I'm going to check a little and talk about it. So uh, basically, so since they were into theosophy a, a lot and theosophy was a new religion or you would say a new way of thinking and which had a lot of elements from Buddhism as it spread into the Western countries and, uh, and it had a lot to do with new age and brotherhood. The first person to talk about it was in fact uh, Helena Rorick herself. Also Helena Rorick's spiritual name was Tara Uruzvati and Helena Rorek passed away in Kalimpong itself. Her ashes were cremated right next to Durpin Monastery where I took you guys already in the vlog. The couple had two sons, Yuri also known as George and Svetoslav. So Svetoslav got married to Devika Rani uh, who was also the queen of um, the silver screen during her time and also and she was a niece of Rabindranath Tagore. All of the stalwarts of the time were all connected to each other even Helena and Nicholas themselves were very close to the Gandhi Nehru family the son had painted a beautiful picture of Indira Gandhi so they were very entwined with the whole socio-political scene of India as well during their time and later on I think George went back to Russia I don't know much about Svetoslav or maybe he 
ended up living oh yeah he did end up living in india and i think he passed away in bangalore so yeah that's basically their history it's quite a long history and uh, after helena's death the italian members and admirers of helena rorick's life and her works took over um, in preservating the place using it as an official place for all their work and they worked with a lot of marginalized communities and empowered them in their work help them generate a livelihood has been so eye-opening for me like even coming here this trip was so amazing like i got to see another side of kalingpong which is just not very touristy and also like i feel that i was facing a lot of burnout in Siliguri because i don't feel very creative there and if you are a creative if you like studying about history culture and if you are very uh, motivated by these things that Siliguri kind of i feel it dumbs you down this trip was amazing for me because my mind really opened and i got to learn so many things and i felt that urge to create better content and um, yeah i think i'm just gonna go off to sleep because i'm rambling at this point of time and this footage has become very long so yeah see you guys tomorrow i'll be checking out tomorrow honestly i could live here forever but i'll be checking out tomorrow and i'll head back the manager here requested me to do try the breakfast tomorrow they're serving up something local and i'm kind of excited for that this is the view in the morning it's my last morning and i'm so sad god it's so gorgeous thank you Good morning from Kalimpong. I'm gonna head out in some time and I just wanted to conclude the vlog from here. It was a wonderful last couple of days and I hope after watching this vlog you guys will also be interested in coming and exploring this beautiful hill station with even more beautiful people. I couldn't go to a few places like McFarlane Church. It was built by uh, William McFarlane who was the first missionary here. saying goodbye to this place <laughs> thank you talking a little bit of jam on our way back and um, the local market is supposed to sit here from 11th onwards i guess so unfortunately there's no market for local artisans today so that's a bummer and just like that my short little getaway had come to an end I was taking back with me the love of so many strangers and a suitcase full of knowledge as there's no better teacher than travel. Okay. He got me this uh, local peda that is made here. Sir, dood ka banta hai, dood ko. Okay. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed creating it and we will meet again soon. Till then, you know the drill. Subscribe to my channel to stay updated on what's next. Bye!